Hi, I'm Mark Axelson, President of Well Prepared, specializing in products for disaster and emergency preparedness, where we like to ask the question, do you have what it takes to survive? Today I would like to talk about prepare for what disaster? This is a chart of the natural disasters in the United States from the years 1980 to 2015, real recent. Notice the red, that is geophysical events such as earthquakes and uh, things like volcanoes. In the green, we have the meteorological events such as different kinds of storms. Then in the blue, we have hydrological events such as floods and mass movement, such as mudslides. And in the yellow, we have climatological events, such as extreme temperatures and droughts. Now, what is going on here? Look, in the 1980s, there was around 25 disasters per year in the United States. In the 1990s, there was around 50. And in recent years, check that out, there's more like 80 to 100 disasters in the United States per year. Something's going on. Here is a U.S. natural disaster risk map. Take a look at the state that you live in and check and see which disasters you are going to be most prone to in your area. Okay, let's take a look at uh, geophysical disasters like earthquakes. This is actually showing the San Francisco earthquake in 1906. A lot of people killed, three to 6,000 people killed, just from a magnitude quake of around 7.7 .7 to 7.9. And quakes do go bigger than that on the magnitude for sure. But this one was right near uh, a city, and it was a combination um, disaster. It was actually an earthquake combined with a sort of human-caused disaster. There were a lot of fires, and it was a combined earthquake and urban conflagration. This shows the percentage of state population exposed to very strong ground shaking. Okay, I'm from Utah, so 81% of Utahns are exposed to potentially strong groundbreaking. And also in California, also in Washington, we need to watch out, especially for earthquakes. What is going on here in the central and eastern United States lately? This is an exponential curve. Starting around 2010, we've had a dramatic increase in earthquakes in that area. Could it be that this is foreboding something disastrous? Take a look at the uh, map of the United States on the seismic risk um, zones. If you take a look at the area right here, that is the New Madrid seismic zone, okay? and of course the west coast. So people in high risk areas, do you have what it takes to survive? Do you have the water storage? Do you have the food storage? First aid kits, medications, tools, sanitation supplies, clothing, bedding, and a place for your documents to be safe. This equipment and these supplies should be stored in a waterproof or at least water resistant container on a secure location on the property away from the house or any likely damage or loss from falling structures. Are you prepared if a major earthquake happens while you're at home, at work, or traveling in your car? Okay, here's some bad news, folks. Many U.S. nuclear facilities are located near areas of seismic activity. Most especially in Southern California and somewhat in South and North Carolina and Tennessee. There is another dangerous spot up near the juncture of New York, New Jersey, Connecticut 
and another one near the juncture of Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts. So if there's an earthquake and there's a problem at the nuclear facility, we'll have another Fukushima right here in the good old US of A. What do you think? Could a large tsunami actually happen in the United States? Well, yeah. It depends on the magnitude of the earthquakes in the region. Did you know that in 1964, there was an Alaskan quake that generated a tsunami with waves of more than 20 feet in the state of California? Did you also know that in the year 1700, a massive earthquake generated a wave so powerful it scarred trees deep inland in California and reached all the way to Japan. So such high magnitude quakes happen every 300 to 500 years or so. So we are due for one about um, any time now, between now and 200 years from now. So I would say a tsunami is within the realm of possibility. Watch out for that. Another geo, uh, uh, no, no, we're going to move on to uh, hydrological events now. Here's uh, landslides and mudslides. This is uh, also Washington in 2014, just recently, where 43 were killed. Now, what's going on here? This is a graph of the deaths worldwide from landslides from 2003 to 2010. Why are landslides on the rise? Deaths from landslides? That's something to think about. Here's a little US landslide overview map. The red areas indicate the highest incidence of risk. OK, those who are in the high risk areas. There's a high risk over in parts of the Appalachians, mountains. Almost all of West Virginia is at high risk. Also parts of Kentucky, Virginia, North Carolina. There's also a high risk over in the California coastal ranges. Now besides having emergency kits, here's some other things that might come quite in handy. Do you have flexible pipe fittings installed to avoid gas or water leaks? Do you plant ground cover on slopes and build retaining walls? In the mud flow areas, do you build channels or deflection walls to direct the flow around the buildings? Something to watch out for in those states. Now, with floods, here's a showing a flood that happened in Johnstown, Pennsylvania in 1889 with over 2,200 killed. So what happened is a dam broke after several days of extreme heavy rainfall, which unleashed 20 million tons of water from the reservoir. This was actually another combination natural disaster and human caused accident together in one. Well, if you want to die in a flood, I've got a good idea for you. Drive through flood water. Here's a look at the US flood risk map. Look, virtually the entire state of Iowa, parts of Minnesota, the Dakotas, and Nebraska are at high risk. Are you guys in those states well prepared for a flood? Besides the usual disaster preparedness slides that you're going to need in most disasters, you want to check to see is your sump pump working? Does the sump pump have a transfer switch with a battery backup? Do you have the backflow prevention at your house so that sewage doesn't come in? And keep those insurance policies, documents, and other valuables in a safe deposit box. If you live in a frequently flooded area, stockpile your emergency building materials as well. Another one is volcanic eruptions. This is uh, the aftermath of Mount St. Helens in 1980 with 57 killed. This car was actually seven miles from the mountain. The victim tried to take shelter in his car, but the blast blew in the windows, letting in a hot, choking ash. How many could have been saved in this disaster if the persons living near Mount St. Helens had volcano preparedness kits with dust masks, fire-resistant clothing, bug-out bags, and so forth? 
Here's a look at the volcanic hazards map of the United States activity during the last 15,000 years. The, red, the redder areas are higher uh, levels of volcanic activity. Look, if you live in these states, besides the normal disaster preparedness supplies, it would be wise to include sufficient quantities of dust mass in with your emergency kit in case of ash fall. This chart is showing the geophysical loss events worldwide from 1980 to 2014. Why are the events increasing? Check this out. Um, back in around the 1980s, there was about 55 geophysical loss events worldwide per year. And now we're getting closer to more like 80 per year in the 2000s in this uh, century here. What's going on? I don't have all the answers, but I know something is changing in the world. Hurricanes. Yeah, let's look at some uh, meteorological events now. This is Galveston, Texas in 1900, where six to 12,000 people were killed. Here's the hurricane risk map. Um, are you guys in these areas well prepared for a hurricane? How's your water storage? Do you have a non-electric water filtration system? Might be something to think about. Tornadoes. Yes, I talked to uh, some people that uh, remembered these uh, tornadoes before in Missouri and Illinois and Indiana. The tri-state tornado in 1925 killed 695 people. This is a tornado risk map. How well prepared are you guys in those states for a tornado? Do you have a generator stored in a shelter or basement? And do you have extra fuel for that generator? Now let's take a look at some sort of man-made disasters. Um, this is in the Dalles, Oregon. Have we ever had a terrorist attack in the United States? The answer is yes. 1984, the Dalles, Oregon. There was a deliberate contamination of salad bars with salmonella poisoning. It, th this actually poisoned uh, 751 people um, by the followers of this Rajneesh. Um, Actually, no one died due to this terror attack, but what if a more deadly biological agent was used? Think about that. Here is the Center for Disease Control's list of bioterrorism agents. There's quite a few different agents that terrorists have in their arsenal. Another type of attack is the chemical attacks. This is in Kurdistan in 1988. There was up to 5,000 killed using mustard gas and nerve agents. This was actually a genocidal massacre, which could occur again, even here. So the question is, how big would the weapon have to be to devastate a population? Well, they actually did an experiment with this. Back in 1950, one evening in 1950, a US Navy minesweeper took a perpendicular course two miles off the coast to downtown San Francisco. The warship was carrying 130 gallons of a special homogenized liquid. The minesweeper had been outfitted with spray nozzles as a ship's stern. Within minutes, large droplets of the two mile long white cloud fell back into the ocean leaving only an invisible aerosol of microscopic droplets that were gradually blown over the city by the onshore breeze. By three in the morning, the aerosol particles reached the shores, wafted into the neighborhoods and seeped into the homes. Entire families inhaled thousands of bacterial spores released by this little warship. This time there was no danger. The microorganism embedded in their lungs was harmless that time. Operation Sea Spray used the non-pathogenic biological warfare agent called Bacillus globigii. This microorganism caused no ill effects in humans or animals, but its spores approximated those of the deadly Bacillus anthracis. Bacillus anthracis is the causative organism of anthrax. 
So scientists were shocked to discover that the simulated biological aerosol had traveled more than 10 miles from its release point offshore. Had the disseminated agent actually been anthrax spores, virtually the entire area population of San Francisco would have been wiped out and received an effective dose and would have died in days. Here is a list of the CDC's chemical agents that could be used in an attack. Does your family have its own gas mask and protective clothing? And another really important question, have you practiced using them? Another problem that we might encounter is radiation emergencies. So really, seriously, guys, how believable is it that the 1945 is the last nuclear bomb to be ever detonated on a population. Is that never, ever going to happen again? Seriously, that's not what I think. The world is still home to some 16,000 active nuclear weapons. So launch buttons are all over the world now, including both sides of the still festering Indian-Pakistan conflict and then there's, of course, North Korea, China, Israel, France, and the UK, all armed for doomsday. Then there are the non-state actors, the terrorists, etc. Some believe that the odds of a terrorist-initiated nuclear attack to be uh, within the next 10 years, the odds might be 50-50, according to some. Are you prepared for radiation? Remember, boiling tap water does not get rid of radioactive material. Do you have the potassium iodide supplements? Do you have what it takes to survive a radiation emergency? Now, financial collapse. Look at what's going on with the possible collapse of the US dollar. This is a chart of the public debt per taxpayer. In the year 2015, we have a debt of $154,000 plus of federal debt per U.S. taxpayer. It's projected to grow to $161,000 by the year 2019. Ask yourself the question, does the federal government have the ability to repay this debt? I don't think so. But the unpublicized and more serious problem is that we have $127 trillion of what is called unfunded liabilities, or entitlements that the government has to pay. This includes Social Security, Medicare, and the 46 million people on food stamps and many other programs. If you add these two figures together, the total becomes over $1.2 million per American taxpayer. This compares to annual tax revenues of only $26,000 per American taxpayer. That's only about 2% of our obligations, folks. We face the decision of either defaulting on our debt now, which would mean immediate economic collapse, or delaying the inevitable by borrowing trillions and printing more non-existent funny money, which is equivalent to putting huge amounts of water in the big soup. How much longer will it be before we have a complete economic collapse? Well, I've got a small hint for you. Invest in junk silver. Any coin except pennies and nickels minted in 1964 or earlier. Most of these contain 90% silver, and these are convenient for trade. And there's other um, ideas that we'll have for you on uh, another video. Well, thank you very much for listening to uh, Prepare for What Disaster. Please check out our other videos on the Vitality Network or check us out online at wellprepared.com.